We didn't celebrate it as we were in the middle of a series, but last week was what we call Ascension Sunday, the day that Jesus left this world reminding his disciples to wait, to wait for the coming of the Holy Spirit who would fill them with power so they could continue the work God began in them and through him. Today, we celebrate the coming of that spirit, the birth of the church, and the wait is over. We call this day Pentecost. Fifty days after Easter, we remember that we are not alone. God is with us. The Spirit abides with us always. There is a beautiful ancient prayer dedicated, directed to the Holy Spirit. Some of you may remember it from the walk to Emmaus. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy your consolations through Christ our Lord. Amen. Often when we think of the Holy Spirit, we depict it as a dove, right? That's the imagery used in the stories of Jesus' baptism. The Spirit descends like a dove. And in this passage from Acts, we often focus on the idea that the Spirit rests as tongues of fire on the disciples. But this year, especially, I was drawn to the imagery of the Spirit as wind. Depending on the translation you read, the Spirit comes as a fierce wind, a mighty wind, a rushing wind, a strong gale force. Now that's an image we're all too familiar with given all the tornadoes and wind events of the past few weeks. I mean, look at what happened in Houston this past week, 100 mile an hour straight force winds. I mean, uh, to uh, electric towers were just bent in two. It was just, it's just amazing the power of wind. And lately, our country has been inundated with an outbreak of tornadoes, and we see on the news the aftermath of just what those fierce winds leave behind. Some are even able to capture them on video and camera. And we are reminded, be it the power of the wind or the power of the tongue or any other power, it can be the source of help or destruction. Now, so often we think of destruction as a terrible negative thing. And yet good often comes from destruction. Buildings are terribly damaged. People lose their homes. There can be casualties and even fatalities. But, and may we continue to pray that God comfort all those struggling with the aftermaths of the storms we've been seeing and the flood and flooding we've seen recently and that which is still to come. The Holy Spirit is often referred to as the comforter. So for those people we pray, come, Holy Spirit, come. When we think about it, we realize good also often comes from destruction. Sometimes what is destroyed needs to be gone. A strong wind can knock dead limbs out of a tree, right? Or move debris that is piled up causing secondary problems like the leaves on a roof that trap moisture or the hummus and decaying matter that harbor insects. A good gale can help make life better. Sometimes it destroys the destructive. The same holds true of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes that fierce wind can help knock out some of the dead stuff we find in the church. When it blows, it too can help destroy the destructive, dated practices, those we've always done it that way, things can be driven from our lives. A mighty gust can push the gossip, the backbiting, the distrust and suspicion from our midst. A squall-like wind can rid us of our selfishness, our arrogance, our false idols and sinful practices. And so we pray, come, Holy Spirit, come. But you know, when a mighty wind blows through, it often leaves a void behind. My friend Leanne had a beautiful oak tree at her house that simply laid down during a storm. She doesn't know if it was the wind had weakened its roots or if the ground was just so saturated that it couldn't hold the weight of it anymore, but it just laid down. It had been a strong, healthy tree, and now the shade and beauty are gone. So there is left an empty flower bed that will need to be filled. And the plants in front of the bedroom windows that receive filtered light will have to adjust to the absence of the mighty oak. And now there is this opportunity to move plants and put in new ones. Construct destruction can 
bring with it the opportunity to create something new. When the Spirit comes, he, she, it, whatever you call it, brings opportunity to create something new. The Spirit can push us towards something new. Yes, even the deeply rooted, staid, and steady church can be nudged toward the future by God's Holy Spirit. That's what happened in the recent general conference in the United Methodist Church. God's spirit was alive and present in that room. And we moved on toward new and better ways of being disciples of Jesus Christ. The spirit has the power to renew. Come, Holy Spirit, come. You know, the early church was often compared to a ship. And so I like to think that it is the Holy Spirit that fills the sails and moves us forward. But we still have to maneuver the sails and the jib just right so that we catch that spirit, so that we can take advantage of that power, not just to keep afloat, but so that we might be a rescue ship navigating the sea of life and offering salvation and wholeness to those who are drowning, those who need to know the grace of God that is ours through Jesus the Christ. We need wisdom and skill and a better understanding of the waters we traverse and the people who are sinking under the weight of financial woes, addiction, grief, loneliness, anger, abuse, and that is keeping them from wholeness and fullness of life. And so we pray, come, come, Holy Spirit, come. The church has been given this incredible power, and it's our job to use it for good. Your young will see visions, your old will dream dreams. One of the things we've been, we are charged with doing is clarifying our vision for this congregation. Who do we see ourselves being in a year, in five years? Where is God sending us? What does our community need that we can be a vehicle through which God can provide? We need to dream God's dreams. We need to dare to be undignified in our sharing of the gospel with others, daring to do things we've never done before. And so we pray, come, come, Holy Spirit, come. If we are to be the church God is calling us to be, we need a cleansing wind to blow through. We need to be to clear our minds and our hearts so that we can let go of the past and embrace the future God has for us. We need the Spirit to give us power, power to speak the language of others, to hear what they say and to understand. We need power to do bold things, even if other thing, even if others think we're crazy or drunk. We need the Spirit of God, the breath of the Holy One, to help our dry bones live again, to fill our cells, and to get us moving forward. And so we pray, come, Holy Spirit, come. Thanks be to God. Amen.